Hello again. This will be part two of a two-part video where we're looking at the Hyoki DT4252. In part one I had search tested the meter all the way up to 2000 volts. We're going to continue with that testing. Alright, I've got everything set up. <clears throat> this first transient will be a 2.5 kilovolts. I think I'm going to shut off the beeper all right that's it we'll go ahead and functional test it okay the meter pass is functional just fine next we're going to be testing at 3000 volts All right, that's it. We'll go ahead and functional test it. All right, the meter pass is functional just fine. For the next test, we're going to be supplying 4,000 volts. Okay, that's it. We'll go ahead and functional test it. Alright, the meter pass is functional. Next we'll be testing at 5,000 volts. This is a thousand volts per division. Okay, we'll go ahead and functional test it. Alright, the meter pass is functional just fine. Next, we're going to crank the generator all the way up. This will be about 5.8 kilovolts. That's a thousand volts per division. Last transient. Alright, we'll go ahead and functional test it. Alright, the meter pass is functional. That's all we can do with this generator. Alright, we're going to continue with our transient testing. And you can see I've got the original transient generator out. So again, this will be roughly 6.2 kV, 50 microsecond full with half height, 2 ohm source impedance. Alright, we'll go ahead and functional test it. Okay, I've reset up the generator. This is going to be about 8,000 volts. We're officially in fluke territory. The only meters that have ever passed this test have actually been flukes. Currently this is looking at 2,000 volts per division. And you can see we're roughly uh, four divisions. All right, we'll go ahead and functional test it. Okay, the meter pass is functional just fine. 
Just an FYI, this next test is where the Fluke 17B Plus had failed at. It's going to be 10 kV. Okay, I'm going to functional test this meter because something inside has been breaking down <clears throat> basically during the entire test. And if it's functional, I think what I'm going to do is maybe pull this thing apart and we'll see where it's arcing at. Okay, I've gone ahead and tested the Hioki. It is 100% functional. Yep, no damage done at all. Now, I haven't ran the negative transients on this, but... Again, something is definitely breaking down. You can hear it arcing. It's done it for every transient that I've applied. And let's just see if we can tell where it's breaking down at. Obviously, we don't have the battery pack in it. That's what we're looking for. I can maybe show you what's going on. This is the input trace here. Obviously there's a slot here and there's a piece of plastic that protrudes through the slot. It does not quite come to the edge of this. And it looks like that is enough to cause this thing to arc right from here over to this plane. So again, no damage to the meter, other than it's actually causing a little bit of damage to the circuit board, but functionally, the meter still appears to be fine. You can see the burn right here, right where the plastic protrudes through. See where it's burning that plastic? It's just cutting right through that barrier. Alright, so what I've done is taken some high density plastic and I folded that layer up and I've sandwiched that around that little plastic insulator. You can see it just hooks around the whole thing and that increases the height of that area just ever so slightly. And that basically fills in that entire void now. Let's just see if that prevents it from arcing. Okay, the meter's reassembled. And we're just going to run the negative transients on this with our little spacer in there and we'll see if it breaks down. Alright, looks like we're good to go. Nice. I can see it on the scope. Waveform looks clean. Okay, let me go ahead and functional test this thing. Well, the Hioki passed that test with no problems at all. So with our little plastic spacer in there, it's not breaking down anymore. So now I'm half tempted to take it up higher. It's not really a fair test, but it seems like something we should be doing. Let's just see if we can kill the meter. Okay, so I just finished running tests on the meter. Without taking the camera off the mount, uh, this is currently 2,000 volts per division. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14,000 volts. And this is currently uh, 20 microsecond per division. So you can see the center point here, we are roughly 40-ish microseconds. But again, that's with the meter on there as a load that's not an open. 
I probably am not going to splice in all this video because it's pretty uneventful. And I think the video is getting pretty long as it is. What I'm going to do, we'll disconnect this. And again, this is with our plastic spacer inside of the meter. Let's try a continuity test. No problems at all. Resistance. This is a half ohm. One ohm. 50 ohm. 100 ohm. 1K. 10K. 100K. 1 meg. 10 meg. It's a 0.1 microfarad. This would be a 1 microfarad. And this will be 10 microfarads. And this is with a short. And this will be one diode. And two diodes. And of course three diodes, which you can't read. Okay, we'll go ahead and connect it to our standard. And this is 500 microvolts. This will be one volt. Ten volts. And this will be roughly 5 volts AC, and we can see it's at 1 kilohertz. So the meter is 100% functional. Alright, so looking at the Hioki DT4252, it passed my static discharge test. We did a 1000 volt DC test, it had no problem with that. I then did my rectified AC line test, it had no problems with that. And then we started transient testing it. It passed at 1K, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3. And you can see a lot of the meters have fallen out by that point. And then at 4, and then at 5, and then at 5.9, basically the maximum of my generator. Then we brought out the original generator and we ran it at 6KV. And then we went to 8kV, and then I went to 10kV where it broke down. So I added a small plastic spacer, and then I continued testing the meter in the negative transient mode, and it passed with no problems. So then I went to 12kV, and I had no problems. So then I took it all the way to 14,000 volts, and I had no problems. So the star is just to denote that I'd added that plastic insulator. Unfortunately, the meter, the way it sits, can't pass this test. Maybe Hayoki designed the meter that way for a reason. I don't know. It's definitely caused some damage to the plastic in that area. You know, but maybe that's by design that it does that. But it is pretty impressive adding that small piece of plastic to insulate that area. I'm running that meter pretty much as high as I've ran any of the flukes and it's uh, holding up just fine. As a matter of fact, you can see that is the only meter that I've ran on that test and it had no issues. This is the Fluke 115 and the Fluke 101 that I've ran all the way up to 12,000 volts. And then you can see up here, this is the Fluke 107 that 5KY provided 
Now these are with a hundred microsecond full width half height and I had restrapped the generator to achieve that. I probably am not going to go ahead and do that with a Hioki just in that I've modified the, the meter to get it to pass as far as it has. Alright, so let's consider this meter costs $150. I was not able to damage the meter other than the bit of plastic where it started to melt and arc over. Comparing that with the Fluke 115, again this meter has not been damaged as well. I have not ran this meter up as high as what I've just ran the Hioki. You know, would it pass? I don't know. I guess I'd have to actually do it. I have ran 5KY's Fluke 107 up to about 15,000 volts, 100 microsecond full width half height before that meter finally failed. I ran 5KY's Radio Shack meter in this Bryman at 13,000 volts, 100 microsecond full width half height, and both of these meters had failed that test. Unfortunately, again, I don't know where exactly this or the Radio Shack were failed at. I didn't have any way to actually incrementally test them at that point. I'm pretty sure that this meter would break down even with the 50 microsecond full width half height that I just ran the Hioki at. So it appears from my own testing at least this particular meter from Hioki, it's as robust as any of the meters that I've looked at. None of the transients that I've supplied to this meter has affected any of the modes that I was in. A lot of the meters you'll see them reset or uh, the display will kind of hiccup. Uh, this meter's never done that. The only thing it did do was break down in that one area. So very impressive. I'd like to see one of their higher end meters. You know, I'd really like to know what they think about that area where it does break down. But like I say in the beginning of the video, I'd actually reached out to Hioki before I ran this meter and I couldn't get them to respond to my email. So I think that's going to be it for this video. I hope you found it useful. Until the next meter.